to another feature of vMix that we should go through our marks. Um, so you can trim files here in vMix. To do that, you just take the player head here, right click on it, mark in, and you can move it again, hit a mark out. You could reset any of these individually or all at once. You could also make shortcuts for these. Um, so we'll see you when we show the playback example. Um, we used um, a pretty cool feature on vMix for hover on a shortcut. So we made it, we actually made this for a restart button. So we made a restart shortcut. We would hover the mouse over an input, hit that button, and then whatever we're ho hovered over will be restarted. So that way we don't need to like open it up every single time or make a restart button for every single input. Uh, we would just be able to hover over it. Um, so for marks, um, we'll be able to make, make a shortcut, let's say, and then whatever we have in preview, for example, we'll be able to mark in and out. Uh, with a shortcut. Um, so that can make that really fast. Um, one thing to note here is unfortunately, you can't shuttle by frames. You could do that in an instant replay, but I can't get frame accurate here. Um, it is kind of by second, which sometimes, so far I've been okay. Sometimes it could be annoying. Like I wouldn't want to use this as a replacement, like NLE, like Premiere, like a nonlinear editor. Um, I wouldn't because I can't get super accurate with it, but I can kind of get close, which is 99% of the time all you need for vMix. Um, but it also has to do a bit with um, how the B frames are, or B frames or I frames are encoded on an H.264 clip, where sometimes you'll see vMix gives you a negative number, kind of like that, even though you're like, wait, but I want to I put the trim here and it's not letting you, it's only putting it there. That's because it can only put trims at certain frames on the H.264 file. Um, so that's kind of a limit with H.264. ProRes doesn't have that problem. You can you do it on any second that you want to, um, but it just depends how the H.264 was encoded for it to see how much you could actually trim. So if you ever have a situation where you're like, oh, I need to do this trim point, but I can't, I would try just re-rendering it as a ProRes, and then that should give you the ability to get the trim where you need it to be. Um, but yeah, again, this is really used for just like adjusting ins and outs, you know, just like cutting off head and tail on, on a clip uh, for your transitions. So yeah, so that's markouts, and then that leads us to how we set up for playback. Um, and so for that, basically the big important part, and I'm gonna look up the instructions that we made for it so I can just double check that there's nothing else super important about it, but we want automatically play with transition turned off. Um, I, it restarts fine to leave on, I think. It just depends, you might have a queue where you want it to continue and then come back to it later. Um, and then I turn off automatically pause after transition, which is why that we had that restart button. Um, because basically the idea is we want to be able to have the audio engineer trail off audio and have kind of control over that. Um, and then we want to be able to have the ability to, um, let me just double check this is the right file. Um, we want to have the ability um, to queue up the clip and have first frame and program, so it'll show up in the switcher. The director or AD will be able to be like, yep, that looks like the correct first frame for this clip. Um, so, but we don't want it to play yet because if we had it play on autoplay, when we wanted the, when the director wanted to roll it, we would need to cut, we wouldn't see it and we could accidentally catch the last frame of whatever is in program because it'll autoplay. So we have to cut and then have it play automatically. So there's some slight latency in there. So we like just putting it over here. So we just have a play button of whatever's in program. So it's already hitting the switcher on first frame and we just hit play here is all we need to do. Um, that's pretty much the big piece of the playback structure. Let me look up the guides. Cool, so we're just looking at playback. So here's some of the shortcuts. So there's a playback file on the Google Drive that you could download that will have like all the shortcuts and stuff. Um, so we set I to be um, like in and out points. Um, we made it so, uh, so we use a solo feature, so then that way um, the operator can listen to it without it going to program. So they could, in theory, you know, if they were playing a really long clip, listen to another clip um, going on at the same time, uh, like and like get a trim on solo instead of playing it out. And that also just reduces risk, even if they're not hot, to just not send any extra audio if you don't need it. So you could just play something in solo to make sure it's good, um, but then not actually play it out. Um, so we would do that. Um, we just had a P button that was just like to play something. Um, and then we basically we made a script to do a stinger because we turned autoplay off the stingers wouldn't work the same way so we had to build a script to do then do a sting and play so it was it works kind of like the script that we made earlier but it just also had a line that it had function play whatever was in preview or program um, to run that 
Um, and so yeah, I would I would um, just read these because um, this is a pretty standard workflow that we'll use. Like we're probably gonna use again for USGA. We use it for New Year's, um, where these systems are basically designed to run on vMix, so we could ingest uh, SDI feeds to record and then play out, um, and then also just load up clips on it, trim them down, check them, and play them out there. So it's kind of like faking an EVS, um, if you're familiar with that. 